I'm delighted to be playing a part in this event, a celebration of the work of BCS and the partnership with government and with employers to attract more great teachers into computing and continue to raise the quality of teaching in our school and the profile of this essential subject. And one of the great highlights of my job over the last two years has been the work done in the DfE, working with organisations such as BCS and the Institute of Physics to select, train, place and then support the next and current generation of outstanding teachers. And the future continues to be exciting and a bit daunting. In particular in education, where we need to keep pace with the times, keep pace with our pupils and produce the next generation of computer sciences who will maintain this country as a hub of innovation, creativity and excellence over the next century. And this is a new subject. IT has come into being in the last 20 years and computing itself is even more recent for a science that has only existed since the 1950s. It is now a part of our lives in a way that few of us could have predicted 10 years ago. And if I think back to my own experience of computers, it was, as for some people here of a certain age, a Pong. Uh, anybody remember it? It was a very simple game plugged into a television set uh, in which you played a rudimentary uh, game of tennis on a black and white uh, screen. And this was followed a few years later by groundbreaking Space Invaders or Pac-Man, which is displayed on this gentleman's cufflinks uh, over here. I couldn't help noticing. Um, and in the early 80s, there was a computer in my room, uh, in my classroom. And I, uh, sorry, in the early 80s, there was a computer room in my school where if you had the patience, you could spend hours programming the most rudimentary games, copy it out painstaking line by line from a manual. And I never managed to make it work. And at the end, there was always a string of error messages in line X, Y, Z, and various other things. And then in 1988, I remember talking to a friend in Cambridge who was studying computing. And he said that people in his faculty communicated through their computers across a network of linked machines. He then went on to describe it as a total waste of time that meant people could bother you when you were trying to get on with your work. Um, well, we wouldn't necessarily see email in those terms now, but he was certainly right about it being bothering, uh, bothering you when you're trying to do your work. And then as a teacher in the early 90s, I remember we got our first computers in schools, big, bulky RMs that took floppy, floppy disks and was used predominantly, at least in my classroom, for nothing more than a bit of word processing. And there was a robot called a Roma who could be programmed to move around the school hall. But unfortunately, it spent most of its time in a cardboard box at the back of my class cupboard because I didn't know how to use it properly. And since that stuttering start, the pace of change has been quite staggering. And this is reflected in the new national curriculum which comes into place in September. Equipping children today with 21st century computing skills is vital to the future prosperity of our country. Computing is now in the English baccalaureate and will be a compulsory part of the national curriculum for schools in England at all key stages from September in 2014. It is imperative that our teachers can effectively deliver a curriculum that excites children. And this is where your scholarships will have the most impact. Enthusiastic specialists who are passionate about their subject teaching in our classrooms across the country. And as you will be aware, and as Bill has described, uh, the BCS and the Royal Academy of, of Engineering together with inputs from several e-safety stakeholders, has been instrumental in developing the new computing curriculum. We also included mathematics experts in order to maintain synergy with developments in maths teaching as well. And last week I was looking at the 1996 to 2000 curriculum, and then in the most recent version, and the changes are quite remarkable and very welcome. The old curriculum emphasized basic digital literacy, lit literacy skills and focused on using technology and exploring its impact. The new computing curriculum will equip pupils with the knowledge and the skills they need to become active creators of digital technology, not just passive consumers of it. We want children to have a deeper understanding of how digital technologies work and to be excited about writing computer programs or their own apps for smartphones. In lines with revisions made to other curriculum subjects, the new computing programme of study sets out the what, making sure that pupils grasp the concepts and not the how. They are also considerably shorter than the old ICT programmes of study, giving teachers more freedom and more space for innovation. Greater demands will be placed on pupils in three broad areas. Computing, where of course the greatest emphasis is, including how computers work 
and the basics of programming, digital literacy, and the application of information technology. Although these three areas were there in some form in the old ICT curriculum, there was very little detail on the precise aspects of programming that they should be taught. For example, it used to say, use ICT to make things happen by planning, testing, and modifying a sequence of instructions. By contrast, from September, primary school pupils will be taught how to design and write programs to accomplish specific goals using sequencing, selection, and repetition, and how to apply logical reasoning to detect and correct errors. And from as early as Key Stage 1, pupils will learn about algorithms, as Bill described, and how to create and debug simple programs. By Key Stage 3, pupils will be taught to use at least two programming languages to solve a variety of comp computational problems, and to design, use, and evaluate compu computational abstractions of real-world problems and physical systems, and how instructions are stored and executed within a computer system. Under the old ICT curriculum, online safety was not taught until Key Stage 3. This did not reflect the ongoing growth in the use of internet-enabled technologies by young people, nor did it address the specific risks associated with new forms of digital technology, in particular social media. And importantly, in the new curriculum, pupils will be taught how to stay safe online. This includes where to go for help and support when they have concerns about content or contact on the internet. And the change will be integral from Key Stage 1 onwards. Awarding organizations are developing new, rigorous subject criteria for GCSE computing, which will build on this more robust curriculum. So how will the scholarships help to make a success of this new and challenging world? We are delighted to be working in partnership with BCS in offering scholarship awards to attract the most talented computer specialists entering ITT both graduates and those who have gained valuable career experience outside schools. And later this afternoon, we will be hearing from two such scholars who have taken very different journeys to, become, uh, to get into teacher training. We are hugely grateful for BCS's support in delivering this valuable initiative. And I was delighted to meet earlier, before we started, uh, Oliver and Patrick, um, who have both been scholars on this programme, who have both found jobs and indeed... Uh, Oliver is working uh, at the new STEM Academy uh, based in Old Street and, and was able already to link up with Natalie from Apps for Schools. Uh, here is somewhere in London, which is the cutting edge uh, of, of the changes and advances uh, in computer technology in this country. Uh, a cutting edge to the extent that we will soon turn uh, Northern California into a dusty uh, computer backwater. And it continues to be a great challenge to recruit the very best computer graduates into teaching along with physics, chemistry, and mathematics. Computing is a priority for the government's teacher recruitment strategy. But with an improving economic situation, graduates in these subjects will be in demand for a wide range of other, often well-paid jobs. So scholarships are a cornerstone of this strategy in attracting the teachers of tomorrow, and we have increased the awards this year to 25,000 pounds. But it is not, however, only the financial initiative incentive but also the prestige that BCS brings to the scholarship scheme, which makes it so attractive. Raising the status of computer teachers in schools and amongst the public. Teaching is the best job in the world, and the scholarships are an essential help to encourage people to come into the profession, particularly those with mortgages to pay and families to look after. Computing scholarships were introduced only last year, but we are already seeing some encouraging signs of the impact they are having on teacher recruitment. In 2012, 2013, there were over 300 applicants for around 50 awards of 20,000 pounds each, and 57 were offered in total. 80% of these had degrees in computing, and the rigorous selection exercise demonstrates they have the necessary skills to become world-class computing teachers. The priority of this government over the next year is the development of a self-improving school-led system and this is focused in four particular areas. Initial teacher training, continuous professional development, the success of the selection and training of new leaders, and school-led school improvement. And we see the scholars, many of whom are here today, as essential partners in this ambition. And I hope and expect that many of you will go on to become master teachers, a network of specialists who provide training and support for their peers. This is exactly the sort of school-to-school -school support an ongoing professional development 
that we want to see in a school-led system. And by April 13, the department announced a further 2 million would be made available for BCS and computing at school to build a network of these 400 computing masters, master teachers by March next year. And schools can commission these master teachers to provide direct, bespoke training for their teachers, rather than the government creating a large, top-down CPD programme. And the challenge for government in this ambitious timetable is how we equip today's teachers who have not the specialist computing skills that our scholars here have today to teach this exciting new curriculum. And in December 2013, ministers announced a funding of 1.1 million for BCS to develop the Barefoot Computing, a new computing readiness program that will provide resources and training to help computing in primary schools, where often teachers have little or no experience in teaching computing to help them to acquire the knowledge and the skills that they need. And we've continued to work with the industry and computer experts, including BCS, to invest in our teachers. In February 2014, we launched the £500,000 Computing Match Fund, encouraging proposals from the sector that would have a positive impact on the quality of teaching of computing in schools. And several exciting projects, including the one being led by BCS, are now underway. BCS and CAS submitted a bid for the fund with £150,000 from the government and a further 284,000 from Microsoft. The Countdown Computing Project will use the network of excellence master teachers to develop free, out-of-the-box, countdown to computing teacher training courses on basic computing. And as Bill described so eloquently, these will be developed so that any competent computing teacher will be able to use them to deliver training to colleagues. You at BCS, the experts, are undertaking the work because you are so much better placed than the government to know what really needs to be done. And BCS and, and CAS will also develop high quality resources and run courses for up to 42,000 teachers to show them how to develop a scheme of work uh, for their first term of teaching computing. And last month it was reported that London has claimed number one position in the PwC Cities of Opportunity Excellence, ahead of New York, Singapore, Toronto and San Francisco, reinforcing London's growing reputation as a world technology hub. And PwC found that London is technologically on top of its game and ranked third only behind Singapore and Seoul for internet access in schools. Central to complete, complete keeping the UK as a world leader is recruiting and retaining the best teachers with the right knowledge and skills. The computing scholarships play an essential role in supporting our teacher training strategy. People of my generation still happily boast they are useless with computers. It is almost a badge of honour to be incapable of managing some of the simplest functions, but our children will not feel like that. Computers are and will be a fundamental part of their lives, woven into every part of their existence from work to health to shopping, the list is unending. And therefore it is essential that as a country we keep pace with the lightning pace of change in this exciting and fast moving world. We must therefore have teachers of the highest quality with the knowledge, skills and understanding of computers to teach the next generation of, teach of children to succeed and drive forward invention and innovation in the future. You scholars, you are that future. It is you with the support of organizations like BCS who will set world-class standards of teaching in our schools. The future is exciting, it's challenging, and it's uncertain. But with you, Patrick, Oliver, colleagues, it is in safe hands. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>